and welcome to our worship service this morning. So all of the pieces in our worship service that are in bold are invitations for you to participate either out loud where you are in your home um, or in your head. If you've never used Facebook Live before, there's clearly a comment section. You're welcome to put your comments there, your prayer requests there, do different emojis, um, whatever floats your boat. If there is a drinking emoji this morning, that would be mine. <laughs> Thank you. It's five o'clock somewhere. Uh, so let us begin with our call to worship. And so welcome. Welcome to this space where saint and sinner stand together, where wheat and weeds grow together, where broken and beautiful live together. Welcome to this space where God alone is the planter, the reaper, the harvester. Welcome to this space where there is hope, where there is life, where there is grace. Come, let us worship God. And so please join me in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, you plant us like seeds in the same field, and together we are nourished and nurtured by the sun. We sway in the wind and are refreshed by the rain. We are blessed by the knowledge that you want us to grow towards what you call us to be. When we deprive others of that same opportunity, forgive us. When we want to uproot those whom we believe do not belong in our part of the field, forgive us. When we label others as good or bad, rather than loving them for who they are, forgive us. When we are afraid to look into the fields of our own lives to see what is growing there, forgive us. When we refuse to acknowledge that we are a mixture of weeds and wheat both, forgive us. Oh God, you know us inside and out, through and through. You search us out and lay your hand upon us. You know what we are going to say even before we speak. So we pray that you will help us to reach out to the uprooted and rejected, the lonely and the outcast, and to work for the good in ourselves, in others, in the world. Amen. Yes, Holy One, joyful planter and harvester of all that is good, hear our prayers and gather them to your heart as together we pray for the seeds of your kingdom to begin to take root right here. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our service then continues with the readings. A reading from Romans chapter 8. So then, siblings, don't you see that we don't owe this old do-it-yourself life anything? There's nothing in it for us, nothing at all. The best thing to do is give it a decent burial and get on with your new life. God's spirit beckons. This resurrection life you receive from God is not a timid, grave-tending life. It's adventurously expectant, crying to God, Abba, Papa. God's spirit touches our spirits and confirms who we really are. We know who God is, and we know who we are, parent and children. And we know we are going to get what's promised to us, an unbelievable inheritance. We go through what Christ goes through. We go through the hard times with him, then we're certainly going to go through the good times with him. That's why I do not think 
there's any comparison between the present hard times and the coming good times. The created world itself waits with eager longing for what's coming next. Everything in creation is being held back. God reigns it in until both creation and all creatures are ready and can be released at the same moment into the glorious freedom that is ahead, the joyful anticipation. All around us we can see the creation groaning in labor pains, and not just what is around us, but what is within us. The Spirit of God groans within us. These sterile and barren bodies of ours are waiting for full deliverance. That is why the waiting does not diminish us, for we wait in hope. Of course, we cannot see the hope, but the longer we wait, the larger the hope becomes, and the more joyful our expectation. Word of God, Word of Life. Our gospel reading from this morning comes from Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus told them another story. God's kingdom is like a farmer who planted good seeds in his field. That night while his hired men were asleep, his enemies sowed thistles, weeds all through the wheat and slipped away before dawn. When the first green shoots appeared and the grain began to form, the thistles showed up too. The farmhands came to the farmer and said, Master, that was clean seed you planted, wasn't it? Where did these thistles, these weeds come from? He answered, Some enemy did this. 
The farm hands asked, should we weed out the thistles? He said, no. If you weed the thistles, you'll pull up the wheat too. Let them grow together until harvest time. Then I'll instruct the harvesters to pull up the thistles and tie them in bundles for the fire. Then gather the wheat and put it in the barn. Jesus dismissed the congregation and went into the house. His disciples came in and said, explain to us that story of the thistles in the field. So he explained. The farmer who sows the pure seed is the son of man. The field is the word. The pure seeds are subjects of the kingdom. The thistles are subjects of the devil and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, the curtain of history. The harvest hands are angels. The pictures of thistles pulled up and burned is a scene from the final act. The Son of Man will send his angels, weed out the thistles from his kingdom, pitch them in the trash, and be done with them. They are going to complain to high heaven, but nobody is going to listen. At the same time, ripe, holy lives will mature and adorn the kingdom of their father. Are you listening to this? Really listening? This is the gospel of our Lord. And so grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we got a real life example, right, <laughs> of that life is lived in wheat and weeds both. When Paul and I first bought the house that we live in now, it was a complete hot mess, right? Not so much on the inside, but on the outside. The previous owners had clearly taken pains to care for the inside, but the yard was kind of like this afterthought. Half of the front yard, literally like half of it, have been paved over with this like weird mixture of stones and asphalt, which continue then along beside the house and into the backyard, where this small handful of daylilies have been planted under what is now Silas's window for what I guess was supposed to be a pop of color. And that was it. The whole thing looked forgotten, uncared for, barren. And so I did the only thing I knew how to do, right? I called my dad. <laughs> because you see, my dad is a gardener. And not in that I have a few extra minutes tonight after work, so I think I might trim this bush kind of gardener. But the kind of gardener who spends hours in the soil, caring, tilling, creating beauty and life in every corner of the earth. In fact, as a kid, if you ever wanted to know where my dad was or what he was doing, all you had to do was look out our kitchen window and you would see him on his hands and knees digging in the soil. And so my dad, if you don't know him being my dad, came. Tools in hand, big floppy hat, right? Ready to get to work. And within a few short days, he had somehow managed to make this miracle happen, to take this wasteland that was our yard and to turn it into the beginnings of a garden. Before he left to go home, promising we would get to the other pieces of the yard in time because transformation is slow, painstaking, lifelong process, he reminded me. He gave me a tour of the work he had done. Slowly, he showed me around the yard, right, touching each plant as he went, telling me what it was, how often it liked to be watered, what kind of light it needed to do well, why he had chosen it for that particular spot. You get the idea. And at first, right, I listened. But the truth is, by the time we got to the third or fourth plant, I had already moved on in my head to the next task that was on my list. A few weeks later, knowing my dad was going to come back for another visit in a few days, I finally went outside to inspect the garden he had created. And most of the things, thankfully, were the way my dad had left them. But all across the front bed of our house was this plant that I knew hadn't been there a few weeks before. 
So quickly, I grabbed the bag of gardening tools my dad had left me with, and I got to work ripping out this plant, right? Row by row, plant by plant. And as I'm ripping it out, I'm saying to myself, I can't believe this, that it's in every corner of the garden. I should have been paying more attention. I know I can do better than this. And so finally, after I was done weeding in what felt like hours, I had this neat, nice pile of weeds in the grass, ready to be thrown out and forgotten. When my dad finally arrived a few days later, I proudly showed him right what I had done and expecting him to praise me for my fantastic, intuitive gardening skills. Instead, he just looked at me and said, Rebecca, that was a juca. I planted that a few weeks ago when I was here. It's a ground cover that gets these beautiful blue flowers in the late spring and early summer and it seems as if it had just started to grow. I just stood there looking at that spot until a few, min until that, until a few minutes had ago had seemed so nice and tidy and organized and controlled. And before I could even say anything, attempt to defend myself, right? He was back down in the soil, gloves on his hands, working to correct the mistake, my impatience, and inattentiveness had made in what was the beginnings of my garden. 11 years later, and my gardening has improved a tiny little bit, but my sense of impatience, my eagerness, my overconfidence, my desire to make neat, orderly rows of things, well, that hasn't. It's still there every time I step outside and put a pair of gloves on my hands. I can feel it there just right below the surface. And all it takes is one moment of distraction and it comes exploding out of me all over the place in every corner of the garden, in every corner of my life. And honestly, I don't think I'm alone in this, especially in our crazy, chaotic, crap-filled, almost unbearable at times world. Just give me a shovel, I want to shout to Jesus. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. I can tell the difference now between wheat and thistle. You know, Jesus, just let me at it, please. I'll have this world cleaned up for you in no time. I know who is good and who is bad. I know what is right and what is wrong. I can see the evil. I know who belongs and I can for sure tell you who doesn't. Just trust me, Jesus, I've got this under control. No, he says, grabbing the shovel out of my hands before I can do some real damage. Just wait. Trust me, it will get done eventually. I will do it. Because Jesus knows, right? As he has known since he told this parable to the crowds 2,000 years ago that we, you and me, are really pretty awful at gardening. He knows that if he left it up to us, we would end up destroying everything that was good, that was just a seedling of hope and promise in this world in order to get at what was bad. Yes, Jesus knows that if he gives us a chance, we would rush ahead and get ripping while he was still back kneeling beside that first plant talking about what it was, how often it liked to be watered, what kind of light it needed to do well, why he had chosen to plant it in that particular spot. Yes, Jesus knows that if he gave us a chance and a shovel, we would do terrible harm to ourselves and to his soil. Because we have, we are over and over again, turning what is meant to be sincerity into arrogance, love into judgment, holiness into hypocrisy, with one small scoop of our shovel, destroying everything that gets in our way. But don't get me wrong, just because Jesus doesn't let us loose in the garden with shovels doesn't mean we are just supposed to sit back and let whatever happens happen, whatever grows, grow. No, we can't. Because as Jesus tells us, evil is real and it is here. 
just as hate is real and racism is real and selfishness is real and greed is real and fear is real and denial is real and anxiety is real and judgment is real and are here growing all too well in this world we call home. But the weeding that we do, right? It needs to be done with tenderness, with patience, with care, with time, with open ears and open hearts. And it needs to be done for the sake of growing the good, not just ripping out the bad. Yes, you see, my beloved, our job is to bless the field. Our job is to bless the world and not to curse it. It is our job to plant grace upon it when we would rather move on, to water it with justice when we would rather take control, to shine love upon it when we would rather act with arrogance. Because here's the thing, this world The people in it, they aren't ours to begin with. They do not belong to us. In fact, the only one they belong to is God. And only God knows them intimately enough, knows us deeply enough to bring everything that grows in God's garden to full harvest, to separate the weeds from the wheat. Last summer, in one of our newer garden beds, Underneath a plant I had planted a year or so before began to grow a thistle. At first I didn't see it because it was buried beneath the bright green leaves of my plant. But after a few weeks, there it was, inching its way up through the soil. Look, I said to Paul at that thistle, look at it. Let me get my gloves and a shovel and I can rip it up. See, I told you that impatience is just right there below the surface. No, he told me, let's wait, be patient. Let's wait and see what color the flower is when it finally blooms. Amen. Our service for this morning continues with our song of the day.
invite you to join me in a litany of trust this morning, which was actually written by some nuns who live not too far from us. From the belief that I have to earn your love, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear that I am unlovable, deliver me, Jesus. From the false security that I have what it takes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear that trusting you will leave me vulnerable, deliver me, Jesus. From the disbelief in your love and presence, deliver me, Jesus. From anxiety about the future, deliver me, Jesus. From my selfishness in the present moment, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being asked to give more than I have, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of what love demands, deliver me, Jesus. That you are continually sustaining me, Jesus, I trust you. That your love goes deeper than my sins and brokenness, Jesus, I trust you. That not knowing what tomorrow brings is an invitation to lean into you, Jesus, I trust you that you are with me in my pain, Jesus, I trust you, that my life will bear fruit in your kingdom here and the one to come, Jesus, I trust you, that you will not leave me abandoned and always hear me, Jesus, I trust you, that your ways are better than my ways, Jesus, I trust you, that my life is a gift, Jesus, I trust you, Jesus, I trust in you today, tomorrow, always. Amen. Our service continues with the prayers, and I invite you to type any prayers that you have in the comments of this video. And so having confessed our trust in God, let us prepare ourselves for the day before us for its beauty and brokenness both and claim its potential sent by God. Let us pray. We bring to God our concerns for today. We bring to God the people of today. For Nicole, for the families of C.T. Vivian and John Lewis. We bring to God our joys for today. For my family. And let us pray for ourselves. Lord, listen to our prayers. Send us your spirit. Fill our lives with love, power, grace, and bring forth your kingdom forever. Amen. And so, my beloved saints and sinners, wheat and weeds, beautiful and broken, knowing that you are loved exactly as you are, please take a moment to share that gift with one another, saying, the peace of Christ be with you always. You gonna say peace? Yeah. Say peace be with you. Peace be with you. And just a couple quick announcements, and then um, we're gonna have Adam get on here for our closing piece. We have a Zoom meeting scheduled for 11 o'clock. So if you have questions about um, our upcoming parking lot worship in August or what worship will look like in September, join on the Zoom. You should have gotten that information, but I will post it in the group as soon as we're done with worship here. And on the Facebook page, you'll see the links to all the various stuff, to the weekly list of things we do, to the pages for giving and the websites. And if you haven't yet checked out Lutheran Youth Western New York and the online VBS they are doing, please take a moment to do that. You can join in at any time. And so I'm going to invite Adam to come and join us up here and lead Hello. us in some music. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. 
We're going to do another one of my favorites today. Do Lord Remember Me. And we do invite you to sing along at home. A day is always brighter when you started singing. Uh, first verse, do Lord remember me. Next verse, when I'm in trouble. And third verse, I, I've got a home in glory land. Ready? Yeah. You ready? Journey's ready? <laughs> Lord, oh, do Lord, do Lord, remember me. Do Lord, oh, do Lord, do Lord, remember me. Sing and do Lord, remember me. When I'm in trouble, do Lord, remember me. When I'm in trouble, So our final blessing for this morning. God who sows and God who reaps. God who allows growth even in the hard places. God who waits patiently for the right time. Send us out now into the fields of your world to plant hope amidst the weeds and seeds of life. And may we learn to scatter love recklessly and everywhere till you gather us in once more. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so go, my beloved, learning to live among the weeds, scattering seeds of the kingdom along the way. I cannot wait to worship with all of you again next week, hopefully with fewer technical difficulties than this week. I'll see you then.